but we've got uh, the oh, okay I was talking about the celebration in New York but well, we've got celebrations all over the world um, and periodically we'll be changing the CG behind me so you can see those other uh, cities and the way they celebrated snapshots from Copenhagen and Minnesota and uh, I guess Australia and other places but one of the things that happened during the 9-11 event was in New York they had a four-day 9-11 um, video festival and most of those videos if not all of them are posted on the internet and now I don't do original research for you so you know you're, you're getting second tier information from me the information that comes on this show has either been out for years or just came out you know within the last month sometime but certainly if you were trying to keep up with 9-11 you'd already be ahead of me on, on the, the news I put on the show but one of the things that services I consider <laughs> useful there's so much 9-11 information to weed through out there I spent the last week watching every single one of those 9-11 uh, videos that they had on their video festival. And the cream of the crop, there are three of them that I want to put on. And you listen to my show, the next time will be the 16th of this month. And uh, I'll try to give you a schedule of shows. By then, a couple of them will have played. But Germany has started making shows. And uh, they made one called 9-11 False Flag. And they made another one called, um, oh, I forget right now. There's an, a third one called PSYOP or Psy War. And um, anyway, they're all, the longest one's about an hour and a half. And I'll be putting those all on as, as specials that'll show about four times each during the next two or three weeks. So you'll get a chance to see what Germany thinks. And, and that 9-11 false flag one is one of the best videos I've seen about 9-11. They cover all of the aspects and hit the high points that really matter. And remember, if you're just coming into the 9-11 movement and you're overwhelmed with information, remember that we do have government infiltrators in these groups. And we don't know who they are necessarily, but they're the ones that produce a lot of arguments and and you know, try to bring a halt to whatever's going on, arguing about the best way to do something, or I think we should do this instead of that, or, you know, try to stay away from that stuff. And the, there's a controversy about what happened on 9-11. And some groups will argue with you and insist that you agree with them about how, you know, they, they all disagree with the official story, technically, but the alternative story that they put forward is so hard to believe and they try to get that inserted so that it becomes characteristic of the 9-11 groups that you try to dismiss the whole group as saying well that's they're arguing about bs and you can bet that that's government disinformation and like i said before one sure way to tell who's disinformation and who's just you know got a legitimate difference of opinion and the the way you can tell is the people with a legitimate difference of opinion, no matter what it is, will agree that we need a new investigation. I mean, we've never had an investigation, never had a criminal investigation. And the one investigation we had, six out of ten of the people that did the investigation said it was a lie. That's a fact. Look it up. If you're, you know, we need to start contacting our government people. And I want to say to the next governor of the state of Oregon, whoever it is, you know, pay attention. If you don't start understanding, 9-11 is going to come out. The news is going to come out. And then everybody that supported the official story or stood in the way of a new investigation is going to be suspect of disloyalty to America. And you don't want to be one of those just because you're bowing to the power structure. Well, have we got any calls? Okay, I've heard the phone line ring a couple times. But... Um, it's it's just amazing that people will you know take the slightest thing as a way to dismiss the whole group now like the outer space weapons we still have you know highly decorated in the educated sense we have phds and and people like that that are promoting the you know there were no airplanes involved at all 
or um, the damage wasn't done by explosives and it wasn't caused by the airplanes. It was caused by invisible power beams from a space platform or maybe there was a big x-ray machine mounted in building seven and it aimed at the whatever you've heard those seem to me to just be nonsense but i don't care what somebody believes about 9 11 as long as they put their energy into demanding a new investigation by you know preferably an international group and a criminal investigation is needed you know destroying evidence at a crime scene is a felony so who ordered the 9-11 evidence to be destroyed there's a felony waiting to be prosecuted hey caller we got a caller go ahead caller hey um i was wondering what your theory on uh building seven was well and why they destroyed it um okay well the why is some people say it's obvious but whatever the reason was we're only speculating here i want to emphasize that yeah and um there were lots of prosecutions going on by the security exchange commission against pl powerful companies like enron for the enron was being prosecuted for crimes against california and elsewhere there were multiple other cases fbi cases um department of uh, defense cases. All these agencies had offices in those buildings, in Building 7, and that's where the evidence was stored. If okay. you were one of these powerful guys, that would be a real nice way to eliminate your problem in court. Yes, it would be. Um, so what was the official story? That it just randomly was demolished? or Well, they, they claim that there was damage by falling debris from one of the twin towers and that supposedly caught the building on fire and it was just simple office fires well they said that it was caught on fire really yeah. and it did there are pictures of fires isolated fires on some floors and then they started bringing up well floor 23 was the new york city emergency uh operation center completely strengthened and armored it had you know, the bulletproof glass, and it had its own air supply, own oxygen supply, own power supply, and it had a diesel tank for generating electricity. And originally they said that it was the D, you know, that was go went along with the f airplane jet fuel in the other buildings that somehow that ignited and that intense. Yeah, fire. but you've seen controlled demolitions before, right? Oh, yeah. And then you saw how they destroyed Building 7. There was no way that was because of falling debris or, like, small office fires. Right. Even even if you know what that looks like, there's absolutely no way. It looks identical to a controlled demolition of a building. Well, you're right. And now my own personal opinion, and it makes more sense to me the more you think about it, uh, Building 7 was scheduled to fall during the same time as the, tw the Twin Towers, probably... To, so that the big dust clouds would obscure it. And when everything cleared, you say, oh, my goodness, look, it brought down seven, too. But yeah. they, they screwed up. There's you, could, there's you could write a book on the mistakes that were made from what we think their official plan really was. And that's one of them. They, they hit the button to drop that building, and it didn't drop. They go, oh, no, what do we do? And they came up with ideas like, you know, Silverstein was observed – on the phone by a Fox reporter. Now he wouldn't lie. <laughs> anyway, uh, observed by a Fox reporter talking to his insurance agent, asking if it was okay to bring the building down with controlled demolition and still have it covered by insurance. And the, the, but the Fox reporter was trying to prove that it couldn't have been brought down by that controlled demolition because while he was still on the phone, it came down. And so he wouldn't have had time to arrange it. But that sidesteps the idea that it had been planned in advance for months. But um, anyway, I think that what happened was the, you know, they came out and they said it, it fell down on its own. And then they said, no, we brought it down. And now you're beginning to see officials say, yeah, we knew it was coming down. We heard it was coming down. And it turns out that everybody got warned ahead of time. How is that possible on an event that never happened in history ever? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> anyway, um, do you have trouble talking to your uh, 
you know, relatives and friends about 9-11, or do you find them in agreement? Or I Most mean, of mine, actually, I find in agreement. I talk to them, and none of them believe the official story at all, to be know, honest. I'm running, in, I, I'm getting braver, and, you know, more more often than not, I take this shirt, and I flash it or something, whatever it is, and I, I'm kind of steeled up for the negative response that I'm going to get, and instead I get, right on, right on, you know, and I, from little old ladies, you know, ladies behind the counter at a bookstore, or, you know, just people. Well, what I think it is, is I think that people, um, tend to think that you're not being patriotic if you're wearing a 9-11 was an inside job shirt or if you don't think that uh, you don't believe the official story or whatever. They think that you're somehow not supporting the troops when really dissent is the strongest form of patriotism that exists. To challenge uh, the government is something that our government was founded on. Right. The whole point of challenging <laughs> is to keep it straight and honest, and that means exactly. you love it because and you wouldn't you put that don't challenge, Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, the other thing is uh, if, well, I think they're confusing two words. One is patriotism and one is nationalism. And what they're doing is they're, they're using this nationalistic furor and frenzy and you're not for the country. You are not of, you are not of the body. <laughs> you know, you will be absorbed. But it you know, nationalism is a blind, absolutely blind, mindless support of anything your government or country does. That's nationalism. That's a destructive force that shouldn't exist. Yet it's called upon and it's nourished. It's uh, Patriotism is something different. Patriotism is something where you want your country to continue along the correct path. Patriotism isn't allowing your country to cheat and kill people and then lie about it. That's not patriotism. True. Oh, anyway, I wish I could be talking to our that. leaders right now. I know that their their underlings, their minions, are monitoring everything that's being said, and I'm expecting an attack. You know, but I'm not a paranoid thing. I'm just reading the what they're talking about, like this article that I read earlier about infiltrate 9/11 groups. Well, I can't I'm believe you're on the air, honestly. <laughs> What's that? I said I can't believe you're on the air, honestly. Well, I think what they do is they. You know they're they're launching a giant assault on these cable access companies. We almost, if if it hasn't closed yet, it might still close. As Wa Washington County uh, cable access is having big problems with money, and we were we narrowly missed closing here. Uh, but I you, you know it there's an on there's a fight against cable access ever since they started demanding franchise free fees from the big companies like Comcast. Comcast puts every bit of its energy into fighting those fees. Whether they do it covertly or not, I couldn't say. But, huh. well, well I'll, I'll make you a deal. If you guys put up uh, some way to make donations, I'll have friends uh, put up some money or whatever. Because uh, you deserve to be on there. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, I have very little expense here. Um, I personally need money, but I... That, oh, well. <laughs> I'm not allowed to ask for that, and I, I really wouldn't want you to send it to me. Um, I wouldn't want it to go to you personally. What I want is for word to get out and for more people to be aware uh, of well, you know the what? information that's out there, and that's extremely difficult to do Are you when aware? you have, like, six media corporations running everything. Have you know about Richard Gage and David Chandler? No, I don't. Oh, or not specifically by their names. Well, Richard Gage is the one who founded Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, and that's ae911truth.org. They are mm -hmm. now a 501c3, which means they're a nonprofit. And you can send your money to them and get a tax statement that will you can take <laughs> off your taxes. And <laughs> nice. So I recommend you send all your money to, to that group. Um, it's not a profit group. And, you know, we've been accused. They say, look at all those books on there. One guy keeps accusing me of being a book salesman. I bought these books. I'm not selling them. I bought them. I've spent my own money, hundreds and hundreds of dollars of my own money on these books. I'm not selling a single one. <laughs> but I recommend that you buy them or go to a library, read them for free. I'm not recommending.